Yeah, I'm absolutely delighted that uh, tonight on the Sports Zone show, we've got uh, Glenn Commode, captain of Barrow Cricket Club. Glenn's been on at the start of the season. He's coming on tonight to let us know how you've got on this season. So thanks very much for giving up your time, Glenn. Cheers, Tony. Thanks for having me back. Right, Glenn, uh, just for the benefit of the listeners, I believe you've just got married, is that right? Yeah, I got married on Thursday. I had to push it back once because of COVID. So uh, we we're lucky that we only had to wait a couple of months to uh, to get married again. But yeah, had a great day. So uh, yeah, it's really good. Had to go back to work today. So it's just a bit of a come down. But <laughs> <hey ho. laughs> uh, we'll make up for it coming on uh, Can Do FM, Glenn. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, mate. And uh, hope Thank you have you. A, a healthy and wealthy uh, marriage. Thank you. Right, Glenn, just for the benefit of the listeners, uh, you did come on at the start of the season, uh, tell us that you were really looking forward after that dreadful COVID year. Can you just mm-hmm. just give us a few uh, low lights of what happened during that COVID year, Glenn? Yeah, so obviously everyone was struggling in the pandemic and we were lucky enough to uh, start or play a little bit of local cricket. So we were scheduled to play in the Palace Shields uh, last season, but we couldn't do that because of COVID so we were lucky enough to be invited into the Cumbria League a local league uh, around here where we played the likes of Furness, Lindell Havrig, Millen uh, and there's another one I've forgotten I apologise if they're listening but uh, mm-hmm. yeah we played around Robin we were lucky enough to do that which is good uh, obviously it impacted the, a lot of clubs and a lot of uh, industries but our club struggled financially we were very lucky uh, to be helped out with a number of grants, which we were, very, like I say, very lucky to get. Uh, but yeah, we we're lucky enough to be able to play some cricket, both first team and second team. We were able to play cricket last year. Then uh, there was a number of restrictions that we had to follow, so no change rooms open. Uh, basically, just had to get changed on the sides. You know, so, uh, social distance had to anti back and things like that. Uh, at the start of the season this year, a lot of those rules continued, so we couldn't use changing rooms. Then the rules got relaxed, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, where it was up to the club to make a decision whether we could play, uh, whether they could use uh, changing rooms. We still got uh, to anti back and things like that, but you know, generally everyone seems to have accepted that. You know, it's a bit of a way of life at the moment in terms of COVID and. We've got to do certain things, whether we like it or not, but for the sake of playing cricket, I guess it's, it's not a bad thing that we are able to play the sport at the end of the day. So just going on to this season then, uh, Glenn, so I think, did you start in April and, and and has it finished? Have you still got games left? Yeah, so we yeah started April, I think mid-April, 17, something like that. That was the last time I spoke to you and we got beat first game against Vernon Karras. Uh, but after that, we went on a run of wins we won every game or we had we didn't we didn't lose we had a couple of no results two no results but we won every game after that uh, then when we played Vernon and Karras again on the reverse fixture we mm-hmm. we uh, we lost against them they've been a bit of a bogey team but it was a bad toss to lose when we were at their spot it rained quite heavily the night before and it was, it was a good toss to win from their point of view where they were able to skittle us for 90 odd you know the sun came out and the wicket dried out and it got a lot flatter not making excuses, they've been a good team this year. So, uh, but yeah, we went on a really good run. So Greg Reynolds uh, has scored well at the halfway point. He pretty, pretty much scored four hundred runs and taken a number of wickets. Uh, Jack Singleton, who we got from Dalton, has scored similar runs. So them two have been the mainstay. Uh, Sam Henderson's been really good with the bat and the ball. He won uh, won a game, hit eighty odd not out against Kirkham and Wesham, and won one. We knocked off two fifty that day because of Sam. Uh, you know, Daryl wearing Gary Collins. I think Gary's taken about 40 odd wickets or closing in on 40 wickets for a 40 year old isn't bad. So, uh, yeah. as a team, you know, we've been doing really well and competing. Uh, so, we're, we're fourth in the league at the moment, but Penrith are running away with it. They're about 20 points ahead. So, they look, they're looking like they'll definitely gain promotion and probably win the league, but we're still trying to, to challenge them. We've got a game in hand because that was. Uh, postponed because of COVID so we've got a double header next week so we have got a game in hand which we can make up on third so between second third and fourth there's only four points between us so we sit a fourth 
there's only four points between us and Vernon Carris who are second. So season's gone gone really well. So and, uh, are you saying there's sorry. an outside chance of promotion then, Glenn? Is that- yeah, so top two go up. So Penrith, like I say, probably going to to win. They've been a really mm-hmm. good side this year. Uh, we beat them at home and we play them last game of the season in two weeks. So the season ends on the 11th of September. So we've got four games left. Oh, right. So, uh, so yeah, there's a chance second, first and second get promoted. So there's a chance of us hopefully going up. Uh, like I say, there's a couple of teams around us who who could potentially get promoted. But it's, yeah, it's definitely tight. All right, so uh, so 11th of September is the last game. Is that at Ernest Pass? No, so unfortunately, we're at uh, Penrith. So our oh, last home right. game, so we're away on Saturday. Yep. Then next Saturday is our last home game against Preston. Uh, so that's mm-hmm. on the 4th, 3rd or 4th of September. So mm-hmm. yeah, so that's our last home game against right. Preston. And when you say you get promoted, what's that to? Is that to the top division or, you know, which which division are you in? Yeah, so we're in the Palace Shield. So we're in the Premier Division of the Palace Shield. However, that's a feeder league. So the the uh, league that we got uh, relegated from is called the Northern League. So we would go back up into the ah, Northern League. Right. Then a couple of teams would go down, top two would go up and it just feeds like that. So the ECB... You know, similar to local football and local rugby and whatnot, mm. they want to do a pyramid system where the the top always put other well, you know top teams always play top teams, and there's that promotion relegation, which adds a bit of uh, competitiveness because mm. Northern League was always uh, just the twelve teams or thirteen teams, however many are in there, regardless of whether you finish bottom two, you wouldn't get relegated. So last three years, four years, four years, I think. 2018 was the first season when they did it. They did promotion relegation. So yeah, we'd go up into the Northern League. All right, and and used to be in the Northern League a few seasons ago, yeah. Yeah, so we joined 20. Uh, sorry, 2004 was our first season. All right. Uh, then we got uh, relegated 2019. So we were hoping to obviously go straight back up last year, but with COVID, we weren't able to uh, mm. to play. So do you play you play on a Saturday, Glenn, or is it or is it Sunday? Is it what's the main day you play on? Yeah, predominantly Saturdays are, are our main day. We do have a couple of we have played a couple of Fridays with twenty twenties and Thursdays, but um, yeah, predominantly Saturdays are, okay. are our uh, main, um, main days. What, what sort of crowds do you get? Uh, been been well supported this season. Not not talking hundreds, you know, 40, 50 people. Oh, uh, okay. So decent. Then we, you know, we've been having some functions on and things like that. So uh, that always helps. But yeah, we've had a really good atmosphere this year in terms of the club. So uh, Matty Holmes has been doing a good job in the seconds. So he's, he came from Dalton a couple of seasons ago, and he's captain in the seconds and developing the youngsters. But then he's got a number of players who are a bit older and who can, I guess, help help him progress those juniors. So. They were just in a final on Sunday, actually, where they got unfortunately got beat against uh, Dalton, uh, the Smith Cup. But you know, nice mm. little bit of uh, recognition for a lot of the the youngsters who were who were you know coming through the ranks and you know playing in the final is something that you always want to do. And I think it's a shame that unfortunately lost. But yeah, mm. developing well. So, are you the highest ranking team in Furness? I mean, you know, was Vickers Town and. Hawcourt Park and Furness, for example, are they in better leagues, lesser leagues? Uh, no, probably comparable. Well, so I'd, I'm not really one to compare because if you ask someone else, they'll probably say they're better. You know, Furness are a really good side. They're the premier side round here and they've had the edge on us for a lot of years. So, oh, right. Okay. Uh, you know, it's just one of those where we've gone through a bit of a journey the last six, seven years with you know, losing a lot of players, then mm. having to rebuild. So, you know, there's a few clubs who are like that. Uh, you know, in terms of it's a good standard. You know, it's probably not probably not Premier Division standard, which Furness play in. You know, the Cumbria League. Uh, but then it won't be far off. You know, we play against some good players. Probably the only difference I would say. So we play against a lot of old Northern League players who 
didn't want to do a lot of travelling, so they just play at the local club. So they are quality players and uh, they can do a job against any team. But probably the, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, playing against professionals. So Palace Shield, you can't have a professional, but you can have an overseas amateur. But we haven't played against many overseas amateurs this year because of COVID. Uh, apart from Penrith, they've got uh, technically, you know, well, they've got professional, but that's by the by. Uh but yeah, probably you know paying playing against a paid player is is probably the difference. You're gonna have some really good amateurs. You build your team around your amateur amateurs, then you have a good paid player who will win you a number of games throughout the year, and and you want their your pro to get their pro out. And why would you not want to play against some professional? That's my argument. So Penrith have got a professional who's quick baller played for Hampshire. Uh, you know, a couple of teams were saying that they shouldn't necessarily be playing in, in the league because of the rules and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, he got, he, he got me out again. But it's one of those where you thrive on that, in my opinion. Why would you not want to play against the best player? Uh, so, yeah, I'd probably say the, the difference is that, you know, paid players come really probably just edges it a little bit, but there isn't probably too much in it, being honest. Yeah, I, th- I think cricket went through a bit of a a bit of a lull, if you like, in the sense that I don't know, it wasn't on the uh, sort of back pages of the of the press, but very recently with the introduction of this new concept, the one hundred, and yep. and and the thing I like about that, Glenn, is that uh, you look at the crowd, and there's lots of kids who uh, are sporting the shirts and uh, mm. cheering. There's a bit of music, you know. There's, I mean, I don't even know whether they're watching the cricket, but they're in, they're in the ground, aren't they? Now, that must board well for the future. And have you seen any difference locally of more younger kids coming along and saying, oh, can I have a game of cricket? Yeah, definitely. I think so. We've got a lot of uh, youngsters who who were involved at the club, Ray Mauer and Alistair McDougall are doing a hell of a lot with training them and they've been doing some summer camps as well. Uh, and, you know, a lot of our 16-year-olds who are in between the first and second team, they've been getting involved and helping out with the coaching and things like that. So it's good to see them getting involved. But yeah, our junior setup has been thriving this year. But again, you know, like I said, we went through a, a massive dip where we've had to work quite significantly mm. on on getting those players back. But yeah, the hundreds, you know, I thought it was really, really good in terms of, uh, there's a few bad games, but you get that in 2020, you get that in mm-hmm. test cricket, you know, in any sport, don't you, where it's not, uh, sometimes they're not good to watch, but, you know, my wife, for example, was watching it. Obviously it helps that Liam Limston is playing and is the best mm-hmm. player in the world at the moment in, in mm-hmm. short format. Uh, it's always nice to see, you know, a local lad doing well and especially someone who's played at Barrow as well. Uh, but, yeah, I think it, I, I thought it was really good. You know, traditionalists will say, <laughs> it, you know, I prefer test cricket, absolutely. But I think, you know, bringing that new format in was really good. you just got to think about, can the professionals sustain the full season? And that's for the ECB to understand, uh, to, to uh, come up with it. Because if they're playing, you know, cricket pretty much every five days, four or five days out of a week for a six month period, that'll soon get tiring physically and even more mentally, won't it? So it's just interesting how they're gonna feed that. I know that's quite that's quite technical, but yeah, I thought overall hundreds was really good. I mean, as you say, Liam Livingston, he used to play for Barrow a few years ago, Glenn, and yeah, it's absolutely fantastic that we can mm. watch a Barrow lad uh, being successful. I mean he's even got a nickname now, the Beast. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's great. And he also played well in that T. Was it the T20 for England? Where did he get a century? Or? Yeah, he got 100. Yeah, it's really good to see. So, that's absolutely fantastic. So, if we can produce a few more beasts <laughs> mm. and, uh, you know, get them up there on the sort of uh, Lancashire and international scene and everything, I mean, I mean, that only boards well for the town, doesn't it? Because there's always been that cricket talent in Furness, aren't there? Yeah, 100%. You know, when we were growing up, me and my brother were go- growing up and going through the junior ranks, Blomenek is competitive, competitive cricket. You know, from the age of 11 up to 
18, 19. There was a hell of a lot of talent around. Uh, and yeah, you know, why would you not want to, to see, you know, both uh, boys and girls progressing as, as much as they can? And, you know, we talk about juniors and, and uh, you know, men's cricket, but, you know, we've got a, a good thriving softball cricket team, I guess. You know, they do a lot of training and they play open, uh, they play softball days and tournament days. So we played against like the, the likes of Ulverston, Lindell, Millen have got a team as well. So it's definitely, and 100 will help that, you know, the young kids are playing, but then the mums want to, or even the dads, you know, want to try it out. They've never played it before. <laughs> Having, you know, a women's softball thing is really good for, for, for clubs, absolutely. And that's the thing, we want the next Liam Livy, 100%. So in terms, I mean, one of the big uh, bonuses as well of the 100, Glenn, has, uh, has been the, the advancement of the women's game. Mm. I mean, they were getting a lot of exposure. Only sort of saw England at international level on the TV occasionally, but like every night on the television uh, or just before the men's game in the late afternoon, there was a w- women's game as well. Like, yeah. And I watched it and I thought, wow. You know, it was it was fabulous. So, is, is there any signs of maybe forming a women's team at Barrow or anywhere else? Yeah, so uh, uh, Lindell have a, a women's team. Uh, we have explored the option up at Barrow, and we, we've got a, a number of people: Enid Milligan and uh, Emily and Laura Crossgree, who are heavily involved mm-hmm. in the women's setup. Uh, I've helped out with coaching and, and things like that, and it's something that we've explored you know softball is probably the uh the go-to for us at the moment with the softball days and a tournament tournaments then they can have you know a couple of drinks afterwards and things like that Mm -hmm. it's just one of those where you know i think cumbria and the ecb cumbria cricket and ecb want uh, more women's teams but it's like us playing cricket for six months of the year when we're training and playing away you know saturday sunday games uh, it's a big time commitment, and you know a lot of a lot of these uh, ladies have families, but then they play a lot of other sports, you know, netball, rounders, and things like that. So net uh, rounders and cricket, they're summer sports, aren't they? So can mm. you get someone to commit? And this is the argument, uh, you know, Sunday, for example, can you get someone to commit six hours when there's mm. so much stuff to do? Uh, over the weekend and, and things like that. So I think it's a bit of a hard, hard ask personally, but I think it's one of those where, uh, like I say, softball, we have some really good tournaments up at Barrow with, with the women's softball. So yeah, it's one of those where we might see for the next few years something something happening and, uh, you know, we're open for anyone coming up and trying women's softball mm. and they might want to come in. So we do have, you know, uh, 13, 14 year old girls who train with the juniors in hardball cricket. So they are they are really good at that and they'll keep progressing and they they'll do they'll train hardball with with you know the, the lads essentially, which is good to see. So in, in terms of attracting a lot of this recruitment, Glenn, I mean obviously there's there's quite a few cricket teams around, isn't there? So mm. I suppose you're up against your furnace, you've Vickers Town, are they still going? So Vickers Town is still going. Yeah, the the I think they're trying to revive the junior setup right. uh, at the moment. Uh, but yeah, you know we're competing against the likes of Lindell, Furness, uh, for, for juniors. Yeah, I don't think they've got a junior setup anymore. Oh right, okay. Yeah, so I think we only played three, four, five teams, if that. Probably mm. four teams locally. You know we're competing. Cricket as a sport, competing against uh, football, rugby, yeah, uh, everything else, pretty much now. So it's one of those where, yeah, a lot of teams. I think Overston might have one, but you know, there's only a couple of games, so you might play the same team three times. So you might still get twelve games out of the mm. season, which is fine. But when we were playing, we we had seven, eight teams that we were playing against when we were juniors. Uh, so, yeah, it's just one of those where I think, yeah, cricket's taking a bit of a hit at the moment. Well, yeah, a bit of a hit, but uh, we are where we are. 
Well, even uh, back in uh, my uh, youth, uh, Glenn, which was quite a long time ago, actually, uh, I played a little bit of cricket for Vickers Town when I was yeah. seven, 17. And my claim to fame, and you're not going to believe this, yeah? I, sco- I scored 72 at Furness Park. I got seven sixes. Wow. There we there, go. Big hair. There you go. And <laughs> Norman Askew was the coach. Do you remember him? Oh, was, right. Yeah. I think he a, was in there. I recognize the name. And we used to face fast bowlers because we used to be absolutely scared stiff. Willie Hogg from Aldiston. Oh, yeah. He used to, he went on to play for Lancashire, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, and, yeah, good play. And there was no helmets or anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, this guy's throwing a ball down 96 mile an hour to a 17 year old and you stood there, you know, so, uh, so Lucky yeah, to get a box. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. yeah. <laughs> so in terms of all this kit that you have to have now, all this protective gear and everything, I mean, that must cost quite a lot of money. How, how do you, do you have to rely upon sponsorship or you know, how do you pay for all of that? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I guess I was lucky enough, me and brother were lucky enough that we were able to to ask for, you know, Christmas and birthday presents combined and we got a new cricket bat and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it is really, really good question. You know, clubs generally do have kits, uh, especially when they're young, you know, between, let's say, 9 and 14, 15, potentially they can borrow kit. But generally, if they, they are interested, then, they will have their own, but it's just, you know, little bits here and there. So you, you obviously need your pads, you need your box, you need a thigh mm. pad, helmet, gloves, bat. So it can be, can be expensive. Uh, does the club not, those. sorry, does the club not supply that, Glenn? Or are you saying individually you have to get it yourself? Is that what you're saying? So the club supply it in terms of we've got kit for, you know, uh, like under 11s, under 13s, mm-hmm. if under, some under 15s don't have it, then there's, there is kit there, which they can borrow. But yeah, you know, we we all have our own kit because ultimately you don't really <laughs> want to be sharing too much of uh, of one another's kit. And that's mm. the thing. It's just one of those where you build it up uh, over a period of time and, you know, you don't necessarily have to get the best bat in the world because the bat's... Some of the, the premium bats, which the players use, can cost 600 upwards of 600 pounds. So you'd wow. never, you got to have a lot of money and, you know, mm. potentially they could break first in the first instance. Uh, so, yeah, it, it just depends on what quality you want, you know. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I have, I've had my pads for eight, ten years and I changed it last year. So it's just one of those where you can get, I don't wear them very often because I'm not in long enough, but it's just one of those where, uh, you know, you don't have to have the flashiest gear and that's what people do. It's just, it's just one mm. of those. But yeah, you know, we do have kit which people can can use, but if you're playing, I guess, senior cricket, then generally people do have their own kit. So in terms of uh, the sort of kit for the team, in terms of whites, do you guys yeah. have to wear whites? Yeah, well, mix, to be fair. So Saturdays we wear whites. So we just got some new whites this year where we've been sponsored by uh, Peter Schofield uh, and mm-hmm. Lakeland Care. So they've contributed to the club in terms of that. Right. Uh, so it is, it is you know, worth worth having that uh, with their support. But uh, we also wear, for the 2020s, we also wear a coloured kit who uh, Ross is sponsored as well. So they contributed to the kit. So we went to another manufacturer and we've got a black kit, which we wear for 2020s colored kit. So uh, yeah, like I said, Ross has sponsored us for that. All right. So, so there are sort of rules that say, you know, you've got to have a certain amount of uniformity within the team. You, you can't go on the pitch looking like a, a mm-hmm. team of individuals, all different gear on, can you? Well, sometimes that happens. I've uh, I played oh, a right. game a few years ago where we had to borrow some of the away kit because, uh, Someone didn't bring theirs. But anyway, it is, it, yeah, generally, you know, everyone will wear club whites. Mm. There are instances where people don't have club whites and that's fine. It, it's one of those where, again, you know, if, they, if they're serious about it and they, they carry on playing for the club, then they might look to to buy some next year. So it's just one of those. But yeah, generally, mm. you know, whites on a Saturday, uh, red ball on a Saturday. If we're playing in coloured kit, then it'll be a pink ball. Mm. Now, 
one of the things that's uh, sort of been under discussion recently, uh, Glenn, has been the sort of mental health of a yep. lot of elite sportsmen, and, and obviously even Ben Stokes um, is taking time out, isn't he, to uh, mm-hmm. to get his to get his mental health back and everything. Now, one thing I, I mean, I only dabbled with it when I was younger, but one thing that always stuck in my head. And, and you're a batsman, and I and I did used to bat a little bit up the order. Um, was it's one of the most strangest, tense feelings in the world. Stood there waiting to receive that first ball. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's a lot of pressure, especially if you're facing, uh, you know, a, a, yeah, a professional bowler, a quick bowler. Mm. Uh, who ultimately can hit you in the head, either hit you in the head or hit you on your toes. Uh, and we don't really face too much quick bowling. So when you face quick bowling, oh, it right. is, it's, uh, when I talk quick, you know, in, in our league, quick is probably 80 plus mile an oh, hour. Right. Uh, so how do you so, deal with that mentally? Uh, that's a good question. So you just got to face it, the ball and the merit, you know, and it's merit. You can't really, you just, Ultimately, you just got to do your best, and you know it's probably it is you know a really hard feeling when you're batting and you get out. No one means to get out, same as fielding. No one means to drop a catch at the end of the day. Uh, but ultimately, you know, there's only two of you out there when you're batting against eleven of them. So uh, mm. sometimes, you know, the situation dictates where you'll be getting a, a fair bit of uh, talk, let's say, from the opposition. Uh, and you'll get sent off and things like that, and that's just part of it. But uh, it's just one of those where you try and obviously do your best, try and block that ball out, and just ultimately try and win it for the team and get off strike at the end of this when your partner can face the uh, quick bowler. Yeah, and obviously, you know, it, there's an impact of uh, the scores that you get because you're under tremendous pressure, really, to perform. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're going in the in the top order and everything, your job is to score runs, isn't it? Now, I think last time you were on, Glenn, you said you got a duck, and I'm thinking, yeah, exactly. Now that must that must how do you deal with that? That must impact your mental state to say, you know, am I good enough? Uh, what did I do wrong? Do I need to go and practice for a week? I mean, how do you resolve those thoughts? You know. Yeah, it's, again, it's it's one of those where sometimes you just got to sit back and think that ultimately, you know, we're playing it as an amateur sport. It's uh, yeah, it's not your job. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you want to do well for your team. You want to do well for your teammates. You want to do well for your club. Uh, and yeah, you know, when you're out for a low score and uh, your team lose, then you know, after we spoke last time, it was I was still thinking about that loss and mm. whether that's just me being captain or you know, I think a lot of players are like that. Uh, and yeah, it's just one of those where ultimately you just got to got to train hard, you got to work on your technique and things like that, and it'll always come because if you're playing at a decent standard and uh, you know you've done it for since you were younger even though we're not professionals and we're amateurs and, you know, might some of us might be average. It's just one of those where you still got a decent technique and it'll come mm. off. It will come off. And yeah, it's just one of those where, like I say, you know, the feeling sometimes isn't overly good when you're there at the top of the order and your role is to try and get the team off. Not necessarily, you don't, it doesn't have to be 50 for none off 10. We're going at five runs and over. It can be 20 off 10 for none. and But you know that your role has... Uh, help to protect the better players, let's say, from from the new ball. Therefore, they can come in and score a little bit quicker. So it just depends, you know. Some people look at this, you know, I guess opening the batting or you know top three or four that they need to be scoring at five, six runs and over. But it, it just depends on the game situation, the pitch. Mm. Like I said before, mm. Vernon Karras won a good toss. If we got one twenty and the pitch didn't dry out and it was overcast, then we could have won that game. But it's just one of those where that's that's cricket. So looking towards next season, Glenn, what do you typically do in the winter? Do, do you do a, a lot of training? Do you do you have indoor nets and stuff? I mean, have you got those facilities? Yeah, so we use Furness College. So Furness College have got the 
uh, like ECB accredited nets, which are really good to to use quality lighting and and yeah, I've seen good. Them, yeah. So yeah, we we use we use them a lot. Uh, you know, it varies. We generally try and do some fitness as well if the lads want to do it. So run a couple of uh, circuit sessions, but it varies from year to year. So sometimes we've started, you know, really early in terms of like October time. But then we found that there's a lot of burnout by time you actually get to the season. Uh, so I think we'll have a couple of sessions before Christmas. Then we'll hit the ground running, uh, you know, come January where we can start doing more skills work and just getting our eye back in. Then we'll, we'll go into the nets. But, you know, it's really good that we've got these quality facilities. But it's uh, <laughs> there's a bit of a difference between, obviously, nets indoor where it's quick and, and hard compared to what we're playing on in, in April but yeah it's good to keep your eye in so we'll be doing doing that over winter so Glenn we're coming to the end of the interview just uh, we're talking about the 100 and the success of that concept can you ever foresee a furnace 100 maybe next July in it and if so what what would we or anybody have to do to make that happen uh, yeah, you could maybe see it. If uh, it's one of those where it just depends, because you know we played local T Twenty this year, which is really good, and mm-hmm. really appreciate being uh, in that. But you know we've got a few players who can't commit to Friday nights because they've got children, or they can only play one game because we've got a couple of older stalwarts who I'd rather them being honest. I'd rather them play on Saturday in the league mm. when we're trying to compete for the league. So mm. why would I why would I ruin ruin a 40 year old when I know that he, he's gonna bowl, you know, eight to twelve overs for me. It's just people don't understand that. Mm. Uh it's good, you know, from a developing this is my opinion. You know, we've taken the strategy of developing our juniors, not juniors, but our young 17, 16, 17, 18 year olds and giving them an opportunity to play in 2020. Uh, and, you know, we got we got beat quite a lot in that. But still, you know, they're better off for it. From mm. a 100 point of view, I think, yeah, you know, I, if people want to run with it, absolutely. It's just one of those where uh, it'll take a bit of, co- you know, coordination and understanding mm. the rules because that took me a little bit of a while to get used to it, you know, bowling 10 balls from one end and swapping and yeah. things like that. But yeah, you know, it's one of those where I'm sure it'll be open for discussion over the next few years. Is, is there a local cricket association who would have to give approval of that? So yeah, it'd be the Cumbria Cricket League ultimately if it was affiliated to them. But, uh, you know, I think previously or a couple of years ago, uh, some of the local clubs did their own 2020 tournament, for example. Ah, right. So there is scope for that. Okay. But it's just taking someone on on that. See, because I'm 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 sort of thinking here, Glenn, that uh, you could get sponsorship for your kit. You know, yeah, all colourful and whatever. Uh, you'd all have a nickname. I don't know what you call <laughs> Barrow, but I don't know the Bombers or something <laughs> like this. The old Speedway team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you you could attract good crowds. I'm sure you'd get a few hundred in on a beautiful July, Wednesday, Thursday evening or whatever, you know, at 6.30 and a few pints. And I, I just, I don't know, I just see an opportunity. I, I, or yeah. am, I, am I sort of pie in the sky? No, no, I think it's, I think there's definitely scope for that. Absolutely. Uh, again, it's just one of those where, you know, similar to the professionals, you know, is the is the time in the calendar for local mm. local cricket because you know this time of the year, July August, is notorious, isn't it, for people going away generally? Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's been been, for example, you know, a lot of uh, weddings have have been postponed and and you know condensed into the summer you know things like that so it's just one of those where logistically no, okay. uh, but yeah you know if, if teams are up for it I think absolutely so, why not so it's it a, a poss- it's a possibility and it'd only be for a few weeks you know what I mean there'd be sort of eight to eight I don't know six teams eight teams and play yeah, each yeah. other once and then the winners of each 
little mini division playing a final or something, you know, over a, three weeks. I don't know. You know. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, that's the thing, the scope and, and things like that. But like, there is a lot of cricket going on, you know, B team league two play on a Wednesday, but it's mm. just one of those where, uh, yeah, there is scope for it, I guess. All right then, Glenn. Well, look, well, thanks very much for your time here on the Cando FM. Um, uh, you're still on your honeymoon officially, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it went back to work, but we've got, we are going away <laughs> soon. So, uh, and, and, you, those, and you've got four games left. Yeah, yep. in the league. And yep, Amley, at, Amley at home. One. So one. Yeah, so next Saturday against Preston. So anyone more than welcome to come up. So not this Saturday, but this, a week on Saturday. Yeah, a week on Saturday, yeah. Right, so anyone out there, listeners, week on Saturday, get yourself to Ernest Pass, home of Barra Cricket Club. Is it is it free to get in? Yeah, yeah, free. Bars open. Bars open, Got, free, yeah. yeah. Got Lancaster Blonde on, Bia Moretti, all the good stuff. <laughs> don't know whether they can say that but <laughs> of course you can no well thanks a lot Glenn and look uh, all the best mate in the remainder of the season and uh, hopefully uh, there's a chance of promotion there and uh, we'll get you on again at the start of next season and uh, yeah. see what's happened on the local cricket scene and whether you have been successful yeah yeah brilliant thanks for your time Tony okay. much appreciated okay Glenn thanks very much for coming on mate cheers bye bye